Hi folks and welcome to another episode of Klein's Lines in Tasmania. Uh, I hope you all had a jolly good Christmas, I know I did, and I ate lots and lots of food. Uh, I'm going to be quick with this intro because I'm editing a few at a time here, try and get the rest of my Tasmania series uh, up and finished and then I can progress on to the next round which was in Madeira. Uh, so without further ado let's just bash on to stage 3 of uh, Derby in Tasmania. Um, there's a wee intro bit of me talking about how I felt I got on on uh, stage 1 which was a prologue on the first day. Um, it was a track that I rode, I felt I rode it pretty damn good, but I got my ass handed to me on it, so hey ho. Um, no footage of that stage unfortunately, uh, and now I'm starting to rabbit on, so uh, let's just get going. Good morning. Beautiful morning. You have to watch out for any kangaroos, we don't hit any wallabies or possums or echidnas. Roadkill everywhere, even some chickens, unfortunately, or hens. What was a rooster? Anyway, we're on day two racing of uh, Tasmania. So I overcame all my fears of doing all the big massive jumps, and they were big. We're talking 35 foot gap jumps. I haven't done anything like that since about 2008 <clears throat> when I broke my foot and uh, was terrified to do any man-made jumps since then <laughs> which wasn't very handy considering <coughs> I had to go on a holiday to Whistler at the back of that <laughs> anyway um, yeah so the big stuff is kind of over and done with uh, the tracks today are a hell of a lot more technical and gnarly massive rock gardens and features to ride through uh, the infamous narrow gap that everyone uh, likes to take a photo of um, de on Detonate Trail, that's the first trail up as well, I mean that's going to be a rude awakening for sure <laughs> um, so I've just got to try and keep it together right smooth um, there will be a lot of pump track involved as well which is where I'm really going to let myself down not for crashing and that but just not, I just don't, I don't ride that sort of trail and therefore I don't know how to maintain pace on it um, not with the fast boys, and there's some seriously fast boys here uh, today. Um, the Aussies kind of ruled the roost yesterday. Um, we've still got our usual Cara uh, right at the top of the tree. Um, there's another French guy came second, just a few seconds, the, maybe even one second at the back of him. Then uh, Michael Beeston, um, no, not Michael Beeston, I don't know his first name, but Beeston came third. Um, now this guy's an enigma for me. I saw him in Rotorua, he's got pot belly, he's got moobs. Um, he really doesn't look particularly healthy or fit at all. Um, and then uh, I noticed his number board was 704, which means he's fourth seed. And I'm like, really? And then uh, I saw him riding yesterday, a practice for stage one. And yeah, the boy can definitely ride. Um, he's highly, highly skilled and obviously doesn't need to go to the gym every day in order to keep up with anybody, unlike me. So yeah, it's all kind of working out good because I've lost all my nerves for, um, for, for everything. I'm not nervous, I'm just like going out to ride, which is great because uh, riding nervous usually ends up in crashes. So we'll just see how today goes. I'm feeling this is definitely going to be a dropped round for me. Um, but uh, hey-ho, uh, just get on and enjoy it. And I'm going to turn you around for a lovely blinding sunrise morning. Don't know if that's blown the camera out. Anyway, okay.
and there goes the finish line, just back there. And I didn't notice on the, when I was practicing the stage and I just kept going and going and going and going. <laughs> I think I went for about another two, three minutes with the climb and everything before I realised the, the stage had finished. Oh, I'm a stupid idiot. Right, uh, anyway, stay tuned uh, for the next episode, which will be stage five, and then the one after that will be stage six. Take care, guys.